Welcome to another episode of On Top of PR. This week we are joined by David DeCamp of Crawley. Crawley is an international shipping company, and David is going to talk to us about his journey and experience moving from a traditional journalism role into corporate communications and also the challenges he faced doing that. What you're going to learn by watching is learning more about his industry and working in multiple countries, learning more about his transition and how you could make a similar transition, whether you're accepting a role in corporate communications from journalism, or maybe you're hiring somebody with a journalism background who hasn't yet worked in PR. I think this is going to be a great episode to learn from those experiences, and I look forward to sharing that with you right now. Welcome to On Top of PR with Jason Mudd, presented by Review Maxer. Welcome, everybody, to the next episode of On Top of PR. I'm Jason Mudd, your host. I'm joined with David DeCamp. David, welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, my pleasure. It's so good to, to connect with you today. Um, David, we want to highlight uh, your uh, experience as a past previous journalist who has made the move into public relations. And then we also want to talk about uh, your current employer and, uh, you know, uh, what's going on in the uh, the shipping industry. And, you um, you know, just kind of uh, give some of your in, your industry insights and best practices for corporate communication. So, David, why don't you take um, just a few seconds to um, uh, introduce yourself, um, give us a couple sentences of who you are and what you do, please. Thanks, Jason. Well, basically, I manage the corporate communications, which includes media relations, corporate social responsibility, various um, content that Crowley, uh, a shipping logistics company, puts out on a daily basis, whether it's on social media or otherwise. Um, I, we're a company that operates in about 35 countries on about three different continents. Um, and we have um, a range of activities on any given day as a company that operates 200 vessels with approximately 6,300 employees. Great, David. Yeah. So how many countries did you say? Uh, 35 countries. We operate primarily in the Caribbean, Central America, and the U.S., but we also have operations in Asia and Europe, both for the private sector commercial side. And we also increasingly do a lot of government logistics work, whether it's disaster response or government ship management or cargo and transportation management. Very nice. Okay. All right, though, that's very interesting. And we will get to a lot of that uh, in the second half of our show. But let's start out with just talking about um, one day you found yourself working in journalism. How did you get the itch to pursue a career in journalism? How did you how did you stumble upon journalism? Well, I started working in journalism when I was 17 years old as a young man or young old kid in <laughs> Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I was a sports writer. In fact, I covered football and basketball, went to Indiana University on, on journalism plans, really never really, um, until my senior year, wedded myself to it. But um, at least for several decades, I was pretty hooked on it and eventually worked through a series of newspapers in Indiana and Florida, uh, like I said, for about two decades. So, And, it, and at that time, I, I left sports writing and, and became primarily a political writer for most of those 20 years. Okay. So what made you decide to transition from sports to political writing? Um, you know, I, I did, uh, took a lot of thought, but I think one of the things that really drove it was I wanted a little bit more diversity in what I wrote about and what I saw, not that mm -hmm. basketball and football, baseball, are not fun things to watch, um, right. but I had a uh, really an itch to cover um, community interests, the way um, people work together to solve and not solve problems. Um, and so I think th that drove a lot of decision making. My, my first job was a really fascinating job where I, I really, in, in any given week, could cover issues affecting growth uh, mm -hmm. from a, a typical suburban 
northern Indiana impact, but this is it was an area that had a lot of um, natural resource issues. The Amish were very much a, a large part of the community in several of those places. So okay. it, it really allowed me to um, explore life as a as a 20 something. Yeah. OK. And so um, you were. So tell me about when you made the transition to PR, uh, p- corporate communications. How did that begin? Well, that began in 2012. I was a political writer at what's now known as the Tampa Bay Times. Uh, people may recognize it as the St. Pete Times. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, you know, in just the same way, really, the parallels between the decision to be a a political writer instead of a sports writer, I felt like I had invested, you know, two decades of my life really in um, journalism, sought th- something new, and um, I had the great opportunity, and it was a great learning experience, probably in more ways than I expected, to go into communications, but in a political sense, um, for the city of Jacksonville as its communications mm-hmm. director. Okay. And so tell me about uh, about that role and, and what let's start with what surprised the heck out of you the, the most uh, moving into, uh, you know, the dark side, if you will, of communications from the news reporting side to uh, the PR side. Well, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of that can go into that move. Um, there's a lot of natural parallels where you're used to the rhythms of journalists and and even social media influencers. Um, mm-hmm. One of the biggest changes that I experienced was as a as a reporter, you're you're sort of a lone wolf. I mean, you may be working with a photographer or videographer or an editor, but it's a compartmentalized daily chase. Whereas, mm-hmm. in that role as communications director, I had a staff. Um, We had long-term planning to do, and there was a lot of collaboration that had to take place in order to be successful on a daily basis or on the long term. And that switch to a more team-based environment was really one of the the learning experiences I had in in that role. You're listening to On Top of PR with your host, Jason Mudd. Jason is a trusted advisor to some of America's most admired and fastest-growing brands. He is the managing partner at Axia Public Relations, a PR agency that guides news, social, and web strategies for national companies. And now, back to the show. So, David, it sounds like you found yourself not only collaborating with a team uh, in a different environment than what you were previously used to working in, like you said, kind of like a, a lone wolf in journalism, but also sounds like you found yourself maybe leading a team. Uh, and uh, and so not only maybe entering a new profession at a new employer, but in a new uh, uh, level of responsibility. Uh, kind of talk to me a little bit about that, some of the struggles that you found and some of the uh, inspiration as well. Well, that, that's a very good question because that really is, is, is people make the transition from uh, newspapers or TV or, or news media in general. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you have to transition to working with new responsibilities in, in a much larger organization uh, with a much different culture. Um, as you know, I, I was fortunate to have some mentors and friends who had made the transition. It's anyone who's been paying attention knows that there are a lot of journalists who are making a lot of moves into the mm-hmm. professional communications ranks from the news media. So in those cases, you know, I was fortunate to work with some great people who I still rely on and call friends today who could give me advice. And I think that's really important for anyone who's thinking about a change to be able to go to folks who have made the switch and can Mm -hmm. give you advice of whether it's going to be a good fit for that role. Now, I I had managed and and on a limited basis teams before. but really nothing to this scale. And, right. and, and so that was, um, you know, it was a learning experience. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. I have zero interest in uh, 
working in politics for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, I tell people I like to go be able to go to the grocery store and grab a gallon of milk and not get stuck in a conversation where someone's wanting to share their opinion with whatever's going on politically as if I am responsible for it or can be helpful uh, in that regard. So uh, I can only imagine, you know, what that would must be like to enter an entirely new profession and then also have, uh, you know, have that burden of, you know, kind of everywhere you go, you're surrounded by taxpayers who have a strong opinion. Well, you know, for me, and, and this gets back to really assessing the transition and not looking at it from a, an economic or a next step perspective mm -hmm. in the short term. I had spent 20 years in politics. So listening to taxpayers and, and hearing mm -hmm. competing visions was in my wheelhouse more than, say, if I had gone to an insurer and yeah. had to learn an entirely different that makes sense. Um, um, mode there. Yeah. So it, it was very, um, th that was an area that played to my background and part of the decision I made. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So for true uh, transparency, I started out in journalism also, and then kind of got recruited into PR because a nonprofit just asked me for some help, you know, and I started helping them with PR. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Instead of reporting somebody else's agenda, I can create an agenda and, and, and promote an agenda and, and actually have an opinion and an advocacy role, which I really uh, surprisingly enjoyed and candidly never really looked back at journalism since then. And so I tell people all the time, that's the big difference is you're going from a role of reporting other people's news to kind of setting the agenda or direction of hopefully of, of how the company is getting uh, in the news. And, um, you know, let's take a minute, just kind of back and forth, maybe and talk a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, when people make that transition to journalism or from journalism into public relations. I think it's a, at least in my mind, a lot harder of a transition depending on your personality than I think people realize. And, and I may have talked to you before about how I'm usually a little skeptical when I see an employer make a move of kind of hiring, let's call it a, a high profile media personality to come work for their mm -hmm. company. And suddenly they're the vice president or director of corporate communications uh, where they went from being a on-air talent or beat writer. And I'm kind of like, you know, there are, as you mentioned, there are skills that transition very nicely. You need to be a good writer and a good communicator and be able to tell a story and storytell and find the facts and all that stuff. But it's a huge difference in my mind. And, I, and it sounds like you can speak to that, too, of, you know, going from a role of reporting somebody else's news to suddenly, you know, casting a vision and setting the direction um, and, and being, you know, kind of very ad active in that role. So um, I like to see people, you know, and maybe it's just I'm, I'm old fashioned, but I like to see people kind of, uh, you know, get some experience under their belt before it's completely just turned over to them entirely. Um, but sometimes that's just not reality. You have one role, like one position, and yeah. you've decided to hire this person. So um, anyway, uh, David, what what's some advice you would give someone maybe who is you know beginning that transition for the first time? Well, that's a very good point on, on the changing role, because it's not just a behavior where you're that lone wolf to a team member, but you are trying to influence public opinion and mm -hmm. the success of, of, of business goals or political goals. Uh, in a way, you're no longer an impartial observer. So one of the things I went through on my journey was to make sure I was comfortable with that. You know, I, I wanted to own the fact that we were going to um, try to influence opinion in a different way than a journalist who's trying to inform or maybe right. focusing a an informational piece. Mm -hmm. um, it, and so I, I had to be comfortable with that. I, I think one of the things that's really important is not only that personal buy-in, but setting out and getting advice from people who right. have, have done it, not just the change, but who practice public relations successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all kinds of great, um, there are all times of great professional associations where you can meet people who can give you advice. I'm of course sure. 
partial to IABC, who where I'm an active member of the International Association of Business Communicators, but there are a number of associations and, and it's really, really important people making the transition to tap into those resources because the assumption that you're just flipping a switch between the news world and the public relations world will really set you up for failure if you're not mm -hmm. careful. Absolutely. And, you know, one technique I've learned also, um, you know, uh, I'm in the agency side, you're on the corporate side and previously on the government side. And that is that, you know, I have found people who have the skills um, to make that transition, I believe, but they have a hard time. I call it kind of shedding that skin of journalism. Right. And they don't want or are unwilling, I guess, to take on an advocacy role. And so, you know, I had, uh, for example, we were hiring in our uh, Tampa branch and I was doing kind of a final interview with, with, with a candidate that we were really thinking about. I mean, we were very close to hiring and I just, I could tell you still had that kind of, and you and I know what we're talking about, that that cynic journalist still was very, right. very strong with him, you know, and you could you could feel it on the phone. You could sense it, you know, his skin like had the scales of cynic on it, you know. And uh, anyway, so I just, David, I just said to him, I said, hey, you know, here's some of the clients that I think you would be working on, you know, at our agency. Um, you know, talk to me about them. What do you know about them today? What's your impressions of them? What are your what are you excited about doing uh, working on their them for? You know, what are you excited about the opportunity you have? And what gives you concern? And as we went through the list, I mean, he was just, you know, critical of every company, you know, and, and he had previously worked kind of as an investigative journalist. And so he really you could tell he wanted to roll up his sleeves and and really dig deep into, you know, finding any scandals that might be going on in the company and all this. And I said, okay, but what if you're out there trying to build a good reputation for them and tell a good story about them? And, you know, a couple of them, he just, I just don't think I could do that, you know? And I was like, why? And he's like, cause you know, and, and he got into the personal things, you know, well, they produce uh, equipment. And so, you know, I'm worried about their carbon footprint and, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And, I, and uh, so it's very eye opening to me, I guess, just that you have to be careful that people understand that their role is changing. You know, one thing I see that a lot of journalists are surprised about is that a lot of, and I hate to say, but it's the truth, a lot of quotes are manufactured, you know? So we're recommending a quote for a spokesperson or a CEO. And sometimes those uh, new to the field, they, they number one, they don't like canned news releases uh, or canned quotes from news releases. We all know that. But uh, for them to genuinely think that it, it was authored originally or initially by the CEO or whoever the spokesperson or, or subject matter expert is, 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 is not reality. And so I can remember one time we had a, uh, a, um, a, a new journalist come work for us and she was writing an announcement for a client. And she literally, just as she always would, picked up the phone and called the CEO's office to get a quote for the news release we were working on. Meanwhile, this, the CEO is, number one, unaware that this announcement is being worked on, right, because he just hasn't seen it yet. Number two, this journalist was actually arguably prominent in the industry. And so they're wondering, why is this journalist suddenly calling, looking for a quote about a story that I don't even know about, that how in the world is it out there yet? And so we had to do some damage control, obviously. And looking back, I think, it, you know, it's kind of comical. But, you know, she just thought if I'm writing a news release about this announcement, surely I've got to talk to the CEO and, and see what he thinks about it. Um, and so, you know, part of that training, David, as you know, is, hey, the, the CEO is actually looking for a recommended quote, even if he doesn't even use it. He still would like some he or she would like some input as to what we would recommend so that they can then tweak it to their liking and you know, very similarly, I work better when somebody started somewhere and at least gives me, you know, nope, I don't like that. Or, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So uh, what were some of your surprises, David? You know, the, my transition was was pretty abrupt. Um, <laughs> it was I literally um, was serving as a state's correspondent in Tallahassee, Florida okay. for the, the Times. I spent a month doing that. I, I was based in Tampa Bay, but during the session, the newspaper would staff up, you know, and you'd live in an apartment for a month uh, during the week. So I went to that. I literally went to Argentina for two weeks, hmm. turned off the voicemail and everything. So I get back and uh, I have some calls about the opportunity in Jacksonville. And over a period of a couple of weeks, I interviewed, got to know the mayor and various 
people involved and, you know, in, in short order, you know, I, I, I really was in a position and ethically I wanted a clean break. You, you really yeah. can't do both for two weeks. And so I literally sure. stopped working at the newspaper on a Friday. And on uh -huh. the next Monday, I was communications director for the largest municipal government in Florida. <laughs> now, within days that my welcome to the show moment was the governor of Florida at the time and the mayor and others with some lawmakers were doing an event in Jacksonville. And I found myself advancing it and staffing it and learning as I go. But I literally right. open a side door and the governor of Florida walks in. And the first person he sees at this event is someone he recognized six days earlier as covering his administration, which he had exactly that look on his face. <laughs> right. um, and I had to explain what I was doing and and that was there. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that put me, though, on that was, you know, to your your um, example, is that taking the blinders off of journalism, that, yeah. you know, um, they're getting used to the idea that, you know, you, you, while your journalism experience is great, you can prepare someone for an interview in a way that maybe someone else yeah. can't. Absolutely. They're, they're paying you to advocate for them yeah. and to give them the recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, once you're in, you have to be in and, and get that buy-in uh, on, on a personal level that you're there because I, I just don't believe crisscrossing back and forth is a way mm -hmm. to, to do either job well. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, you know, I grew up in journalism, sounds like very similar to you in the early 90s. And, uh, you know, I remember in, uh, editors just, you know, pulling me aside and saying, you know, well, just don't ever cross over to the dark side. You know, you don't ever want to work in PR, you know, of course, and these are all people who are either working in PR or something very similar to it today, uh, just because market forces or, you know, you just, you get to a point and, and many argue the PR profession is a young person's game. And I would argue that, in some ways, so is journalism. You know, a lot of people get into it early and 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 find themselves taking those skills elsewhere. So, um, all right, Dave. Well, we are running short on time, so I, I want to talk to you about um, your current role uh, at uh, at Crowley and uh, how did you make that transition? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I should be honest, and the voters helped me make that transition. <laughs> um, you know, the, the mayor I worked for uh, did not win re-election. In, in full disclosure, he's term limited after four years anyway, so it was not a, a long-term position realistically. Um, so after I left, I had the benefit to do some consulting work in a few months in between, and I really started working, and, and this goes back to what we're talking about, really started working from a position of, I need to find a place that has a good culture that takes advantage of what I can do. Okay, and, good. And Crowley was that where it's fast paced. Um, they wanted um, someone with a media relations experience. Mm -hmm. um, and and it really gave me a culture um, that em embraced what I had. In fact, my one of the VPs I work for is is a former newspaper writer from right, back right. in the day. So um, I guess one way to look at it is he knows how I'm wired a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but that's but, shared you know, DNA. I, yeah, and um, it, it and it really is important that when someone is making a switch, I feel like, particularly into the corporate world, which mm -hmm. was new to me, that you, you take stock in that. And it just um, worked out well for uh, my needs. They wanted someone who's done content uh, to speak to some of the political uh resistance you have to engaging that way. I, I really wanted to get into the real world. Politics yeah. is very short term and, and this is mm -hmm. long term. So it fed a lot of need, you know, on an, a, any given day, including today, I can be working on something for Central America, Alaska, mm -hmm. and keeping track of a ship in Asia from mm -hmm. a media relations or communications opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, Crowley, Crowley has a great culture for that. And, and I was really pleased to have the opportunity to come to that. Yeah, that's great. I, I know a lot of our listeners uh, work for, you know, companies that have a global front footprint very similar to you. Um, any tips or advice on, you know, work life balance when there's so many time zones and so many countries and, and so much activity going on? 
Yeah, I mean, I I tell my team, uh, people I manage or or peers that, you know, dedicating that time to yourself, however much Mm -hmm. you can give in a morning is crucial. Um, For me, um, I I block time on the schedule. It's focus time. Mm -hmm. Um, It's different now environment we're in, obviously, but um, it's it's very crucial to have that that airspace to think and prioritize. Right. I also. And I also think that you really need to build the the relationships with the people in those locations mm-hmm. because you can't you can't be in thirty five countries at one time. Yeah, no way. But you know, to to be able to support people and also draw upon their experience, you, you know, you you don't have to own every issue, but you have to build relationships just as any other group does. I, they, I consider the business units, my clients or my customers. Right. Uh, and and um, I want to have a positive service oriented relationship with them. So they view me as an asset at a strategic level. Excellent. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that is really good advice. And uh, I think we'll wrap up there on, on that piece of information. I, I had many more questions for you, but unfortunately we've run out of time. David, thank you for joining us today. And um, look, if, if our audience, our listeners, our viewers want to connect with you, uh, what's the preferred way for them to reach you? Uh, the best way is on LinkedIn. I'm there um, sharing Crowley content and other resources and tend to be as responsive as possible on that. Um, and, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and talk about what I've run into and what I've succeeded at and what I haven't. Yeah, well, we didn't get into what you haven't, but uh, I'm, you've had very good success, David. I'm really proud of you to see what you've accomplished. Uh, I've enjoyed our relationship as we've gotten to know each other more and more over the years. And uh, again, if there's ever anything that we can do for you, let us know. Otherwise, uh, again, thanks for being on the show today, sharing some of your experience and insight. And hopefully, uh, you know, the, the viewers uh, at home will take away from this conversation you know, what to look for in their next uh, position they may be exploring or when they're hiring and also learn a little bit more about, you know, interacting with uh, reporters and, and, and journalists, which is so foreign to some people uh, in, in marketing and public relations. And that's what our uh, show is here to help people do is um, learn more about PR and I guess how to be on top of PR. So, David, we thank you for joining us today and look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, Jason. I appreciate it. Yeah, be well, my friend. This has been On Top of PR with Jason Mudd, presented by Review Maxer. 